can, my family. We ask that the Holy Spirit of God would lead us and guide us in all truth and understanding. In Jesus Christ's most holy and powerful name. This is part two of our spiritual warfare series. It'll be about offensive spiritual warfare. In part one, we learned about defensive spiritual warfare and that the, bo that the battle is in the mind. We learned that the enemy has come but to kill, steal, and destroy. He accuses us. He's the accuser of the brethren. He uses deception and temptation against us. But God has made us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, whom strengthens us. He has given us his word, which is the sword of the Spirit, in order to combat our adversary and his minions. Offensive spiritual warfare consists of tearing down strongholds that have been formed in our mind when we have taken the bait and accepted the deceptions and lies of the adversary. Strongholds are incorrect thinking patterns based on error. The correct weapon that we are supposed to use to tear down such strongholds is through meditating on the Word of God. Ephesians 6 tells us that the weapons we are to use in a spiritual warfare we are to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword is an offensive weapon meant to tear down and destroy the enemy. And when we meditate on the truth of God's Word, that's what it does. It tears them down. Strongholds are built in error and torn down through truth. The devil tells you you're a failure. Look at your past. And he'll bring up things from your past to tell you how unworthy you are. But God's word tells us what past the blood of Jesus Christ has washed it away. And he will rem it says in Psalms 103:12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed transgressions from us. Isaiah 43 and 25, I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Micah 7 and 19 tells us, He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquities, and thou wilt cast all thy sins into the depths of the sea. Glory to God in the highest, for he is for us and not against us. So, we know that in a nutshell, spiritual warfare is a battle that goes on in our minds between lies and truth. And if we know the truth and can focus on it, and then when we stand on the promises of God, that is what will help us. That is what will help us to overcome. That is what will help us to be successful in spiritual warfare. Just as a soldier must learn when he goes to basic training to put on the armor of God, or to put on his armor every day, we who follow Christ Jesus must also put on our armor every morning when we wake up before we go into battle. The soldier is taught to never leave his weapon as well as we should be. We must always take our sword of the spirit of truth, the word of God, with us. We ask God to write it upon our hearts and our minds so it is there when we need it to call upon it. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11 tells us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that we can take our stand against the devil's schemes. We must remember that all we have to do is stand in faith and upon the promises of God, that he's already overcome the world, and that he's victorious. So we lift up a standard. We lift up a banner, and our banner is our Lord and Savior. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen us and protect us from the evil one. 
2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 tells us, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedience to Christ Jesus. One Peter five eight through nine tells us to be alert and of sober mind, for our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. We are to resist him, standing firm in the faith, because we know that the family of believers throughout the world, our brethren, is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. When I have a problem that seems insurmountable and that I keep getting beat down upon, I go into my prayer closet or wherever I might be at the time and I surrender it to Jesus Christ. And I tell him, Lord, this burden is beating me and I surrender it to your feet. For I know that you will fight this battle for me and that I will stand on the promises of God that you are to overcome the world and I've already overcome these problems in Christ Jesus most holy name James 4 and 7 tells us submit yourselves then to God resist the devil and he will flee from you whenever I turn over my problems to the Lord and I surrender them to him I then stand in faith that he will take care of it and I begin to give him prayers of thanks every day for taking care of the problem that I had Recently, I had a problem with a creditor, and uh, the creditor had no mercy, no, no, couldn't put himself in my shoes, nothing. And so I tried everything I could humanly in my own way to fix it, with it not taking care of the problem whatsoever. I turned it over to our Lord and Savior. And I thanked him for taking it over. And within 48 hours, my problem was solved. I give glory to God in the highest, for he alone is worthy of praise. When we stand upon the promises of God with faith that he will act on our behalf, it moves him. For God is not a liar. And he acts on our behalf. Romans 8, 3, 7, and 3, 9 tells us, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. We must be in the Word of God so that we practice and fine-tune our weaponry so that we are given more quivers for our bow so that we are given more and stronger weapons to use no matter what problems we might face. I ask the Lord my God to write his word upon my heart and upon my mind so it is there when I need it. I actually had a time when I was driving somebody and they were almost like chanting in the back of my car where it was like using spiritual warfare against me and so immediately I was driving and facing the road in the front and I began saying spiritual warfare prayers. Not loud, but just enough so that I could hear them. And then the war and then the, pretty soon the ride was over and I dropped them off and they didn't say anything. But the car the feeling in my car was just so much lighter than what it had been when they first got into it. So there is an enemy that we are fighting against, an adversary. 
1 John 1 and 7 1 John 1 and 7 tells us if we walk in the light as he is the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin I like to look up um, spiritual warfare verses in the Bible so that I can write them, I, I memorize them and write them upon my heart and upon my mind so they are there when I need them. Remember that all, all man has sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. But I thank God for Jesus Christ who came and took the punishment for my sins. It is a gift that I can never repay. I thank God for what he was able to do. When he came and lived this life, a perfect life, with every temptation that we had, and he overcame the world. He knows what we face and what we go through. Do you know that he already knows our prayers before we even ask? But he waits for us to ask. He waits for us to ask, and then he, he will answer our prayers. Our faith will beat the fear. Our faith in God. I taught my children, my, most of my children, and even myself when I was a young kid, were afraid of the dark. And uh, I taught my children that instead of being afraid of the dark, that in your mind you just say, God is with me, and he will protect me. And then you walk and turn on the light or whatever it is in the room that you're going to, whether it be the hall light or the bathroom or whatever. And I told them that our enemy wants us to fear because it feeds off of fear. The uh, manifestations and the demons, they like to feed off of the fear. So we must have faith. And when we stand in faith and upon the promises of God, he has no power over us and he must flee. We have the ability, if we choose so, due to the blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 and 19 tells us, Having therefore, brethren, the boldness to enter in the holiest of holies by the blood of Jesus. Okay, so we can enter into that place in our prayer closet with praise and worship. And you will feel the Holy Spirit upon you. And then you can ask him to renew in you your heart and your mind. I pray that he would finish his work that he has begun in each and every one of us. We pray every morning on the way to school with my children that we are found worthy, not through anything that we have done, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, our King and Savior, to escape the things that are coming upon this earth. I know that when time comes, when we all must face the judgment seat, when we're there before God, that we're going to have to give an accounting for everything we've done here upon earth and what we've done for the kingdom of heaven. I thought long and hard about this. I wrote big old long things of speeches of what I was going to say when I was finally in front of them and all. And finally it dawned on me that there is nothing that I have done that can make up 
for the punishment that my Lord and Savior took for me. So when I'm in front of him, I will tell him, have mercy on me, a sinner, Lord. for the things that I have done that have caused you pain. I will come to him in humbleness and I will rely on his mercy, his grace, his love, and his forgiveness. For I know that none of us is worthy, but through the blood of Christ Jesus. So I ask you each to do this today, to look up Bible verses about spiritual warfare. And then when you are in your prayer closets, to start bringing these up every morning. And I pray for each and every one of you out there that you would use your sword, his word, every day. I pray that you would make it a habit to get up in the morning to thank God for your provision and protection throughout the night, to put on the full armor of God, and to use your sword throughout the day, no matter where you are or what is going on. Use the Word of God in all your situations. And you will see a quick change for the better. You will see that those who have been hindering you will move aside. You will see that those who are attacking you flee from you seven different ways. You will see that standing upon the Word of God and the promises of our Father in Heaven defeats our adversary. I pray for all those who cannot pray for themselves. I pray for my brethren, for my neighbors, for my loved ones, and for my family, and my relatives, and all of your children. I pray that Father God in heaven would place his holy fire hedge of protection round about us on all sides, far above us and far below us. I pray that he would cover our homes and our vehicles, our places of work and worship, our pets and provisions, our children, our schools and their activities. I pray that he would protect us from all electronics we encounter throughout the day, that he would scramble the enemy's frequencies, and that he would hide us from our enemies. I pray that he would fill us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit of God and wash us clean with the blood of Christ Jesus. I pray that he would give us more wisdom and discernment in these days so that we might tell the truth from the lies in Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name. We pray to our Father who is in heaven, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.